Good morning and welcome to Woodlawn Without Walls Worship. I'm Pastor Lori and we are continuing to journey with the Knights of the North Castle here at Woodlawn, joining in with our Vacation Bible School crew and learning about the armor of God. You'll continue to see some different backgrounds while we do worship today and I hope you enjoy them. Here at Woodlawn, we're committed to maintaining our online service, not only for our members who are unable to attend in person, but also as an invitation to introduce ourselves to anyone who might be interested in learning a little bit more about Woodlawn. Also at Woodlawn, each Sunday we have a special missional focus that we give to each week. If you're interested in finding out what our mission is this week or learning about Woodlawn as a community of faith and grace, you can find all that information on our website at woodlawnumc.net. Let's join together now in reading the call to worship. Gracious God, when storms rage around me, Remind me to clothe myself with the whole armor of God, to fasten the belt of truth around my waist, listening for your direction. When anxiety and fear begin to crawl in, remind me to put on the shoes of your peace to guide me. When doubts fill my mind, remind me to take up the shield of faith. God, be my shelter. When I lose my way and am searching for you, remind me that the sword of the Spirit will accompany me every step of my journey. I place my confidence and my trust in you always. Amen.
We come together now for a time of prayer. I'm glad that you're joining me here in our Children's Chapel as we continue to celebrate the Knights of the North and our Children's VBS Week. If you have a prayer request that you would like lifted up, you can comment on Facebook right now if you're watching on Facebook so we can be in prayer for you. You can always call the church and leave a message or call during office hours and we can put that on our prayer chain. And if you're a member of Woodlawn and you'd like to be receiving the prayer chain so you can be in prayer for members of the community throughout the week, call the church office and we'll add you to that list. Let's join together now in prayer. Gracious and wonderful God who supplies our need, who meets us in our need, we ask you to meet us in our need today as we come to you. Remind us of the call you have placed on each of our lives, the call to discipleship, the call to stand up to injustice, the call to faithfully follow you, the call to hold on to hope and to share the good news of your grace and love. God, we know you call us to use the gifts you have given us to love others, to be compassionate, to share your grace and peace. When troubles come, help us to call to you, to trust in you, to lean on you and on each other. Remembering the tools of the whole armor of God that we have access to. God, let our helmet of salvation remind us of your unfailing grace, reaching out to us even in any mess we could be in. God, let your words, the sword of your spirit, the words of scripture guide us, surround us with strength and courage. Let all these things bring us comfort in our time of need and bring comfort to those who are in need this day. We pray for your armor to surround those who grieve, those who are sick, hospitalized, receiving medical treatment, receiving care at a rehabilitation center, searching for answers from medical staff. God, you know the prayers and the needs of our hearts. We honor you and show our love as we pray the prayer that you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. For the past three weeks, we have been on a journey with our Vacation Bible School children, youth, and adults as they have been Knights of the North Castle on a quest for the King's armor. And in worship, in Sunday worship, we have gotten to join in on the fun. We've had three, a three-part sermon series on the full armor of God. Last week um, was Vacation Bible School week here at Woodlawn, and oh, what fun they had. The children learning scriptures, songs, and stories. They even got to meet Sparky the dragon and collect all the pieces of the knight's suit of armor as they learn about the, breast, the breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth, the shoes of peace, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the spirit. There will be a celebration, um, a worship service at 1045 this morning here at Woodlawn in the Worship Center if you'd like to join, or you can watch a video celebration posted on Facebook and YouTube at nine o'clock today as well.
So we conclude our sermon series today talking about the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit. You might remember the first week we spent talking about the disciples' call to stand up to injustice. We talked about the armor of God that is given to us to withstand, stand up to, and carry on together as we face tragic darkness of the world the breast, with the breastplate of righteousness and with the belt of truth. Then last week, we talked about our disciples' call to follow God in faith. We discovered the armor given to us to help walk in peace and to trust God, even in times of trouble. The shoes of peace and the shield of faith. Today, we focus on our call of discipleship to hope, to hold on to hope. We'll talk about where hope comes from and how we are to share the hope of the good news with others, share that gift with the world. We discover that with our helmet of salvation and with our sword of the spirit. Let's take a look at our scripture for today. That's what the sword of the spirit is after all, scripture. Our scripture reading today comes from Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4 through 10. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loves us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. And raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus so that in ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not the result of works so that no one may boast. For we are what he has made us created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. This passage reveals a lot of our relationship with God and a lot of God's deep love for us, God's intervening action, God's transformation desired for us, God's compassion, and what it spurs inside of us as a response to that. Grace. Grace, grace, grace. This passage is a reminder that God's grace has absolutely zero to do with how lovable we are and has everything to do with how loving our God is. We read the promises in this scripture of God's grace and we hear all throughout scripture more promises of God's grace. As United Methodists, we often talk about grace in three forms. Three different forms of grace. Provenient grace, justifying grace, and sanctifying grace. Provenient grace, or grace that comes before, is the reminder that God's grace extends to each person. God does not withhold the invitation, but offers grace to anyone. Provenient grace reminds us that God is active in our lives, working within us and around us before we even have a relationship with God. God meets us in the mess that we are in, not withholding love until we have found perfection and holiness, but rather joining us in that misery, in that darkness, and providing us a way to walk through it together. God proves here God's commitment and God's covenant to all of humanity. Provenient grace is also the reminder that God's action always, always comes first. That's what we acknowledge in our baptism. Before we even do anything, before we even do anything, God has already reached out to us in grace. And this action from God prompts a response 
from us. A response that acknowledges our need for God, repenting of our wrongdoing, and living into our new birth, our new life in Christ. It's a choice that we're afforded according to our free will. The choice to respond to God's extension of grace or not. Justifying grace is the grace that meets us in this place. Ready to give forgiveness when we seek repentance. We're sustained by God's sanctifying grace. As we live into our new life with Christ and journey together with God, as Wesley says, moving on towards perfection, meaning we know we will not achieve perfection in this life, but that we strive for goodness and mercy and kindness. We strive to love God and love our neighbor. And we know we can turn to God when we fall short and that God's grace will meet us there too. And that, my friends, is where our hope comes from. Our hope in our God's patience, compassion, mercy, gentleness, persistent nudging. Our God does not leave us, but God's grace is fit for each stage of our journey. No matter where we are, God's grace is sufficient. God's, God's grace meets us there where we are and walks with us forward. And that is the hope that we put on when we put on our helmet of salvation. That's the hope we find when we search our scriptures, our scriptures, our sword of the spirit. As our scripture from today says, we are saved by grace, but not by our own doing. We cannot boast by, about anything that we've done that has achieved grace. No, it's not by our actions or our good deeds. We're not evaluated and deemed worthy or unworthy. It's not based on how good we are. Christ has already said, you are worth it to me, to each one of us. Does that transform you? Does this amazing grace inspire you? It's pretty awe-inspiring to think about. Our scripture reminds us grace is not based on our works or efforts, but is a gift given freely. And it also reminds us that doesn't mean we won't see good deeds or that we don't need to do good deeds, but that those good deeds, those good works simply flow out of us because of that transformation, because of that inward transformation that grace has brought into our lives, transformed by the grace and the love of God. Those good deeds are fruit Fruit that shows the inward change in our lives. Through these works, we live a testimony of who God is, revealing not only God's compassion for the world, desiring us to do good and to be the good in the world, but it also shows God's compassion for the world, transforming us through grace given freely. When we put on our helmet of salvation, we are reminded of the ways that God continues to save us. Provenient grace, justifying grace, sanctifying grace. God extends grace to us before we even realize it. God gives us grace when we ask for it. And God gives us grace to sustain us as we are transformed more and more like Christ. Our helmet reminds us of this hope, of this transforming grace from our God. And we hold our sword of the spirit as our greatest resource as scripture Connecting through God to God through these words, 
praying to God through the scriptures and asking God the tough questions when scripture is difficult. We remember that our whole suit of armor is for defense, except for the sword. The sword of the spirit is the only item that's sometimes used for offense. And that's for proclaiming the good news of God, for sharing God's love with others by living out our testimony, by sharing the scriptures and words that honor God and the grace that has been given to us. Grace given freely, grace that has not been earned, grace that is a gift. Grace that is there waiting for us to open our hands and receive it. When we think through the pieces of armor, as we have been reviewing together these past three weeks, each piece has a purpose to sustain us on our journey of discipleship. The breastplate of righteousness, which reminds us as disciples, we are called to stand up, withstand, and, and stand up to the injustice of the world. The belt of truth that reminds us as disciples, we can rely and hold on to certain truths, such as God's love for all of creation. And these truths hold us up as we face trials. We have the shoes of peace. As disciples, God's peace is what guides us. We are guided by the peace of God that is placed on our hearts. And we are called to be guided by that peace and to be agents of peace in the world. The shield of faith protects our entire body of armor. As disciples, we are called to rely on our faith, to trust in God and not on our own understanding, our faith and not our sight, to trust and follow God. Our helmet of salvation is our hope. We keep our mind set right as we place our hope in the love and grace of God and God's promises. And the sword of the spirit, the words of scripture that bring all the armor together. They are our story to tell, our testimony to proclaim the good news, to share with the world. We are equipped, siblings in Christ, for the work of the Lord for our discipleship journey. We are equipped to be disciples with the full armor of God. We as disciples have our armor ready to withstand the trials of the world. Armor that gives us courage, peace, faith, and hope. Let us trust in God's provision and let us share the good news of God's grace. Don't forget, you are invited to celebrate Vacation Bible School and witness the children's testimony of what they have learned this week, the ways they have been changed and transformed, the ways they have met God and found God in this place. There are a few ways you can do that. To come to worship at 1045 here at Woodlawn in the Worship Center and see it all for yourself in person. Or you can catch a celebration video on Facebook and YouTube at, posted at 9 o'clock today. Until then, receive this blessing. May hope overwhelm you today. May you be more and more aware of God working around and within you. And may you share the good news of this through your words and through your deeds. Amen.